A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a man dressed in, white, in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of them to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Let us pray. O oh Lord, open our hearts to the miracle of this day. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. May we not be afraid of the miracles you work in our world. May we always take comfort in knowing you are with us and that even death cannot triumph over your love. Turn our fears into hope and our sorrow into celebration. For Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia.
Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, we give thanks for what God has done for us. We give thanks for God, for in the beginning, our, your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant waters. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. He, look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love. Freeing us to live as Easter people, you rejoice, we rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. together. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. And our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I'd remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you now in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you have been saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Caiaphas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though I, it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. 
The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He went down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Where are you looking? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As part of my internship, I helped with the confirmation class. We had our weekly classes along with a retreat in the winter. At that retreat, we focused down on the idea of grace and justification and the idea that we are granted forgiveness in life through Christ not because of anything we have done, but through God's abundant love for us. The kids seemed to accept this fact in stride, but the parent volunteer who was with us really struggled with that concept. She kept asking my internship supervisor if that was true. She couldn't accept the fact that God's love was given unconditionally and that we could do nothing to earn that love. In her mind, nothing in life was free. You had to earn everything and that included God's love. She remained unconvinced despite his best efforts. But but that's the way of it, isn't it? We can't truly accept anything unless we somehow feel we have earned it. And if we haven't earned it, we feel uncomfortable or even scared of accepting such a gift. Maybe we feel unworthy. Maybe we still think that despite all promises to the contrary, There are hidden strings attached that will surface when we least expect it and snare us into something we we never wanted to be a part of. Or maybe the idea of something being given in any unconditional way is simply overwhelming. Our Our brains can't fathom it. Our hearts can't take it in. And there is likely no greater example of this than God's love. It's perhaps why the disciples struggled to grasp what Jesus was doing throughout Mark. They saw life through a certain lens, and Jesus was operating outside of that lens. He was healing people and speaking to people that they didn't feel were worth the time. Jesus did things that frightened them, that challenged them, and in the end, tried to push them to see a God of love underneath all of God's actions. But they couldn't get it. And when they were faced with the final miracle, they ran away. They ran frightened from God's love, and Mark lets us linger in the truth of that statement. And would any of us have done it any differently? Would any of us have figured figured it out when the disciples themselves so obviously couldn't? The likely answer is that when we face the truth of our own lives and all the ways that we have have been less than perfect, we would act the same way. Like the parent volunteer at the confirmation retreat all those years ago, we can't accept it. Like the disciples, we run away from a miracle that defies all explanation. A miracle whose greatest power may be in how it demonstrates that God, who is love, will never be separated from those that God loves. 
We may want to argue otherwise. We want to say that we absolutely accept God's love. But then we, in our secret hearts, still judge ourselves unworthy. We are broken, sinful beings, and if we dig down deep enough, we will all likely admit that we don't feel that we deserve God's love. If we dig into the wounded heart of our being, we come to realize that we are running, even if we never realized it. We are running from God because this great, immense love of God is not meant for us. For others, perhaps, but not us. And so we run, and have been running most of our lives. This stands in direct opposition to the reading from the Gospel of John, where when we have the disciples again departing from the scene of the resurrection, obviously confused by the events, but instead of the action stopping there, John re refocuses on Mary. In John, it was Mary who found the empty tomb and told the others, and now she is weeping. The last vestiges of her beloved teacher, the one whom she loved beyond anyone else, are gone. And when she encounters Jesus, not yet recognizing him for who he is, she pleads for him to tell her where they have taken Jesus' body. And then he says her name, just her name. It is spoken in all love and gentleness, and her heart is opened, and she knows him. But she also knows love. Her heart is open because in that moment, all the fears and pains have been washed away. In the pronouncement of her love, Jesus has spoken his love for her. And unlike the disciples who run and mark and wander away bemused in John, she understands what it is to be loved and to be in the presence of love. For the moment it takes her to respond back with the term Rabunai, she knows a peace and acceptance that few of us may have ever truly known. In this exchange with the Holy Mary comes to know with eyes wide open what it means to be loved. And she proclaims that love to Jesus and then in joy and celebration to the disciples. Perhaps more than any other disciple in any of the other Gospels, she gets it in this moment. She knows that God's love is what God's love is and how it sets a person free. She knows it's peace and she knows it's joy and she goes on to proclaim it. It is interesting in the course of Christian history that we don't speak of Mary as more than just a redeemed woman of ill repute. She, unlike any other in the Gospel, apart from Mary, Christ's mother, seems closer to the will of God than any of the other disciples. She acknowledges Jesus as Lord on more than one occasion. She is fearless in following Jesus, even if those who recorded the Gospels, outside of John, have kept her presence in the story all but invisible. When we so easily identify ourselves and the other disciples because of their weaknesses and their foibles, we could also look to Mary and find an example of someone whose faith was joyful and fearless and loving. We don't celebrate her like we should, but her example is a powerful one. She, on more than one occasion, caught up in the truth of God's love, boldly proclaims him for all to hear. Silenced by much of history, her witness, when it does appear in the Gospel accounts, is a mighty one, and she seems to know and love Jesus so completely and trust Jesus in ways that others aren't always prepared to do. We can find ourselves in the shrinking fear of the disciples, but what about the joy and courage of Mary? We are, like the disciples, bound in our pain and unwilling to truly allow ourselves the opportunity to experience and be open to God's love. Better to run from it than to find it really isn't for us after all. It is a human reaction to what we think is impossible, but blessedly God doesn't let us linger in the despair. God meets us in our despair and offers us love. God doesn't let the disciples run and forget all they have seen. They do eventually come to understand and to pass that beautiful story onto the world. But on this day, when the darkness of the world presses down on us, and we can feel more like the disciples that ran from the tomb, let us instead be like Mary. Let us be brave, and let our hearts seek that which we love most. And when we find it, may we be willing to accept what it is God gives us. May we be open to God's loving will. And as that will transforms us, as it does to Mary, 
and as it eventually does with the other disciples. May we go forward and proclaim with great joy that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
rejoicing that Jesus has risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, granted humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lift in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice, empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new, breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith. We pray especially for all those seeking resurrection in their own life, for hope to be renewed and for peace to be restored. And we pray for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trust in your, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. God in community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Thank you. 
blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. I don't have much in the way of announcements in front of me, so I will simply leave you with this. I hope that your Easter, not just today, but through the Easter season and throughout your lives, may be a time of Easter renewal, of resurrection, of hope made manifest, and of peace made tangible in your life. I hope that as we move forward from this, this day of risen hope, that we will experience that hope time and time and time again throughout our days. So have a blessed Easter as we celebrate our risen Lord. And may that joy and hope that we find in this day move with you always and give you strength in the days ahead. So I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. I hope that you stay healthy and that you can enjoy the warmer weather ahead. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.